So, to begin with, we decided between uh, uh, say Professor Harrison and myself, we decided I was going first. So my name is Medula, Medula Sharma, and I am the program director for Masters of Clinical Audiology. Um, but before I actually get started, uh, it's always good to hear uh, from someone who's, who's done the program, working, and what they have to say. So bear with me and um, see what Emma Ras uh, Ramsey has to say about her work, her learning. I'm Emma and I work at Cochlear in Sydney and I'm an audiologist. Hearing loss affects people of all ages all over the world and the area of audiology that I work in is cochlear implants. To me, working in cochlear is so rewarding because to see a child here for the first time when you switch on their implant and the difference that it makes to their life, it's just an extraordinary invention that changes people's lives. Another part I find really rewarding about the career that I've chosen is the bonds that you make with the other people that are in the industry. They tend to be really passionate about what they do, they love what they do, and just the families that you work with are so appreciative of the help that you give them that it just is incredibly rewarding. Studying at Macquarie really opened up a lot of doors for me. It allowed me to go into the career that I was really keen to go into. The other great thing about studying at Macquarie is that in the very near future, the hearing hub will have opened up and the Hearing Hub is going to attract world-class researchers and academics in the area of audiology. It will just add to the experience of studying audiology on campus. Okay, so needless to say, the Hearing Hub has finished. You are in it. Um, and, and it has brought up a few more opportunities, but we'll, we'll learn about that as we go. So to begin with, for those who are uninitiated in the field of audiology, uh, what is audiology? We like to believe that it's both a science and an art. It's science because we are looking at working uh, with people and diagnosing it. We are looking at working with equipment in order to uh, work with devices. Um, we are looking at um, uh, uh, management in terms of uh, training, creating training programs, but it's an art because in the end it relates to people, their needs, their requirements. So we are looking at assessments of, of hearing, but we are also looking at balance, for instance. Uh, we are looking at how we can uh, supplement and, and support the devices that people are fitted with. Um, uh, people uh, people who like to listen to loud music, uh, percept of that ringing in the ear, um, that's surprisingly quite common. And yes, we as audiologists manage that. And just to, because I, I like examples, let's see how many people hear that. You're going to get very familiar with that tone very soon when you join audiology because that's what you use to test young babies. But then, why is this relevant? because, what do you think that was? Pin drop silence, it was not. What was it? Give it a, sorry? That's it. Um, it could be anything, right? It could be person running, and yes, it was somebody tapping. What about this one? Sorry? It could be turning on the shower or a tree. Kind of life-saving skill. Um, I used to think it was a joke until I met somebody who actually did have to uh, run because the branch was falling on their head. But how did they know it was falling on their head? It was because of their auditory system. That's what you're learning as an audiologist. You're learning that because we need it. Um, so another fun fact. Over 360 million people worldwide will experience a disabling hearing loss, making it one of the most common sensory deficits. So you're in a field that's not going out of fashion, unfortunately, or fortunately. Um, what are the pathways to the clinical audiology? Um, any degree. 
is acceptable. Um, we are quite flexible, uh, but you do, of course, require an average uh, credit average. Uh, the new uh, requirement is the WAM of 65. You should be able to calculate it on your own on an online. Um, I'm sure the, the tab's there. Uh, but when you're applying, what we also require is a two-page a personal statement. We don't need a referee, but we do need to understand what you understand by the field, uh, by by what what it means to be an audiologist in Australia. What do you what what do you see yourself as, and why do you want to audi uh, join audiology? What's your experience? What's led you to come into come here, come and talk about this. Uh, so these are some of the things we expect in those two, and we are rather strict about two-page personal statement. I refuse to read the third page, so please don't, don't extend that. Uh, and, and once you have completed the two-year degree program, you get into um, a six months to one year supervised, but it's a work internship. So your employer will pay for that. So you will be paid, and once you complete that internship, you can negotiate um, remuneration. Uh, that's, that's between you and your employer. So the bottom line is, once you have completed the two-year degree program, you are eligible to um, enter the workforce. Um, what about the two years that you are going to be a part of this program? Are you going to be very busy? Uh, first of all, I want to highlight, do you see that arrow in case uh, it's rather small, but what this is showing is the whole ex program for the first year. We start before the rest of the university, so the 17th of February 2020 is going to be the start, um, well, not the date, but the week. Um, and, and following that, you will have um, six weeks of coming into the university for your lectures, um, and then there is a clinical prep because we take it upon ourselves to make sure that you are ready for going into a clinical placements. But I'll tell you more about it. The idea is there's block learning and block clinical placements. So you don't do once a week kind of a thing. You actually do more than a week, and there's dedicated time uh, for clinical placements. We also have uh, online learning and teaching, which means most of our teaching uh, basic, um, I guess, lectures, they are available online. So you have a schedule, you, you know what you're supposed to be uh, studying and learning about every week, but then you, that's supported by you coming in for a face-to-face -face consolidation class, but that in addition to some, um, actually quite a few in the first year, hands-on uh, practice practical tutorial. So there's a lot of um, uh, supported learning. Clinical placements, uh, clinical units are all face-to-face -face classes. Uh, in terms of going on and talking about the clinical placements, uh, they are formal, very intensive, uh, but they are based on relationship-based uh, education and training, uh, case-focused. They're supposed to, uh, they're meant to support, direct, and guide you uh, into the clinical, uh, to develop your clinical skills. And that comes from, um, I guess, our APEX body, which is the Audiology Australia. Uh, if you want to learn anything more about what it means, uh, please visit the Audiology Australia uh, webpage and you'll learn more about what it means to be an audiologist in Australia. All placements are allocated by our clinical education manager and today we've got Yifong if you just want to. Uh, so she, she's the one uh, along with Chevelle. We've got uh, two of them who are uh, job sharing and they basically de uh, negotiate and find the variety of clinical placements and they are all sorts. You'll be in public hospitals, uh, government agencies like Hearing Australia, private clinics organizations, community health centers, not-for-profit organizations, schools. But these uh, placements, as I was saying, are uh, in a block setting. So you have one week block, uh, and you will have minimum of two week, uh, two one week placements each semester. And uh, you may also attend placements in semester break. So you're basically committing to 
two years with us. Um, and uh, they're, you're required to attend placements, uh, not just in Sydney, but areas around Sydney, uh, in regional places. Uh, and they are all, uh, unfortunately, the cost, uh, your cost. Um, but we do have some opportunities uh, to support uh, with scholarships. Uh, they are somewhat competitive, but you, again, Ifong and Cheval will tell you when they are available for you to apply to. Um, so why what do you want to study here at Macquarie? Well, first of all, uh, the hearing speech language um, in Macquarie, we're, we're the only program in New South Wales. Uh, so, so if you want to stay in New South Wales, we're it. Uh, but that's not the only reason. Um, we rather, th this hearing hub is, is basically uh, a good example of why you should be here, because we, we, we created the space to be able to run and do hearing research. So that's why you should be here, because there's a lot that's happening with Cochlea on board. Uh, we have Hearing CRC, and we are also running our own university center uh, for translational studies. We have, um, it's a professionally accredited program. Um, we, pl uh, we offer clinical placements um, in, in variety of settings. Um, and, and that's why you should be here. But that's not all. We also have the private hospital that offers ENT services, the Macquarie University Hearing and Clinics uh, downstairs, speech and hearing clinic. Uh, that's a very busy but an excellent training facility and a model for breast practice. And we work with them quite closely to try and map how, your, uh, how you are, uh, I guess, uh, developing um, as, a, as a clinician. So um, the good news is we do have scholarships, 12 common uh, well-supported placements, and they are merit-based, but if you are from rural or remote areas, then you are eligible to apply. Um, and basically, in the application, you can tick and, and follow the instructions. It's not a very uh, onerous grant application. Um, Hearing Australia is also offering one scholarship to anybody who belongs to the Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Island um, and, and, um, and, and you're admitted into the program, you'll be eligible for that. Um, in terms of job op, uh, prospects, well, uh, most would be employed before completing the program, uh, but within the first six months, in any case, most would have jobs. Uh, you also need to appreciate that initially, the jobs are more likely to be in the uh, regional areas. Um, uh, city uh, jobs are more competitive, and people who are in the regional areas want to come back to the city. So it's a nice cycle we all follow. Um, and of course, the starting salary is dependent on the area of employment and your negotiation skills. Uh, in terms of the important dates as students that you need to know about, the applications open tomorrow. Uh, but you have uh, close to uh, a month and some for completing your application and submitting. Try not to leave it for the 31st of October, uh, but that is your deadline. Um, and, and we would start to give out offers by mid December. We do have uh, second round offers sometimes, and that would happen by the end of December. Um, and, and as I said, we start in the week of 17th of February. If you have any questions with regards audiology program, that's my email. But if it's generic application email, please use that email. Um, and there you go. I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Elizabeth Harrison, and then what we're going to do is take questions afterwards. Thank you.